In this lesson, I am going to discuss how to compute determinants using row reduction. Let us start with these two matrices. Which of these two determinants is easier to evaluate? The first one or the second one? From our previous lecture, we've learned that the determinant of a triangular matrix can be computed simply by getting the product of the entries in the diagonal. And what we have over here is an upper triangular matrix, so therefore this determinant is just equal to 1 times 2 times negative 3 times negative 1. So therefore this is equal to 6. However, for this determinant, this is 4 by 4 matrix with no zero entries. That means that we have to compute four cofactors. Whatever row or whatever column we choose, we have to compute all the corresponding cofactors. So we have four 3 by 3 determinants that we still have to compute. So therefore, it would really be very tedious to compute for the determinant of this matrix. As we have seen, computing the determinant of a matrix can really be tedious. However, if the matrix contains a lot of zeros, just like in the case with your triangular matrix, calculating the determinant will be very easy. So that is why what we want to do is to create zeros in a matrix so that the determinants would be easier to compute. And to do that, we will apply elementary row operations to it. Let us investigate by looking at this simple 2x2 two two matrix A. If we interchange the two rows of A, we get the matrix B. Let us compute for the determinant of A. The determinant of A is equal to 8 minus negative 3, so that's positive 11, whereas the determinant of B is equal to negative 3 minus 8, which is equal to negative 11. So therefore, what happened with the determinants? When we interchange the rows of A, the determinant simply got multiplied by negative 1. Next, what if we perform a replacement row operation? So in this case, our B was obtained by adding row 2 to negative 2 times row 1 of A. That will be your new R2. The determinant of A here is equal to negative 4 minus negative 6. That's equal to 2. Whereas the determinant of B is equal to 2 minus 0, which is equal to 2. So therefore, when we perform a replacement row operation, the determinant of the two resulting matrices turned out to be the same. Lastly, let's investigate if the row operation is a scaling row operation. We have our matrix A here. And this time around, I will multiply the first row of A by 1 half. And so we get this matrix B here. The determinant of A is equal to 18 minus 16. So that's 2. Whereas the determinant of B is equal to 9 minus 8, which is equal to 1. So therefore, the determinant of B is equal to 1 half times the determinant of A because the determinant of B is 1 and 1 half times 2, that's equal to 1. We can rewrite this as determinant of A is equal to 2 times determinant of B. Let me just rewrite this result here. We have 2 times determinant. I will be using this notation. Determinant of B is 1, negative 4, negative 2, 9. This is equal to determinant of A, which is 2, negative 8, negative 2, 9. So what happened here? It's like we just factor out the common factor in your first row. We can pull it out. We can generalize the results that we obtained earlier into this theorem. Number one, if the matrix results from a scaling row operation, so we multiplied it by a scalar k, the determinant of b 
is equal to k times the determinant of a. This means that we can simply pull out the common factor to get the determinant. Next, when the matrix is obtained by performing a swapping row operation, then the determinant will just be multiplied by negative 1. And if the matrix was obtained by a replacement row operation, the determinant will not change. When do we use row operations? We use row operations when we turn a matrix into its row echelon form. The nice thing about row echelon form, if A is a square matrix, how does the row echelon form of a square matrix look like? It will now become a triangular matrix, correct? And therefore, the determinant of that matrix can be computed simply by multiplying the entries on the diagonal. This is what we will do to compute the determinant of a matrix. We turn it into its REF, but along the process, we have to make sure that we are incorporating all of this to get the determinant of the original matrix. Let me illustrate it with this example. So first, I will swap rows 1 and 2. And what will happen? You will have negative of the determinant of the resulting matrix. 3, negative 6, 9, 0, 1, 5, 2, 6, 1. And then, since I want to turn this into row echelon form, I want to turn this into 1. So, instead of dividing this by 3, remember that we are using determinants here. We have to keep track of the effect of scaling on determinants. So, what do we do? We simply pull out the common factor of 3. So, this one will be negative 3 and then you have... 1, negative 2, 3. And then, I want to turn this into a 0. This is just a replacement row operation, so therefore the determinant will not change. This now becomes 0, 10, negative 5. I will perform another replacement row operation to turn this entry here to 0. Take note that the determinant will not change since it is simply a replacement row operation. We have negative 3 times. We now have here an upper triangular matrix, and therefore, this is now equal to negative 3 times the product of the diagonal entries, which is equal to 165. Let's look at this example. We want to evaluate the determinant of this matrix if we know that the determinant of this matrix here is equal to 6. What we need to do is to perform row operations on this matrix to get this matrix. While at the same time keeping track of the row operation so that we can incorporate it with the calculation of your determinant. I will write determinant of A is equal to this determinant. Remove the common factor of 3 and negative 1 here. So this will now become negative 3 times the determinant of a plus x, B plus y, c plus z, x, y, z, and p, q, r. And then I want to have this, so I will swap rows 2 and 3. So since I swap rows 2 and 3, I will have a negative determinant. So it will now become 3 times copy. Here, I swap rows 2 
and row 3. So far, I'm close to what I want to achieve here. However, I have a plus x, a plus y, a plus z. I want to have a, b, c only. So what will we do? We replace row 1 with row 1 minus row 3. This is replacement row operation only, so therefore the determinant will not get changed. There you go. And this determinant is given to be equal to 6. So therefore the answer is equal to 18. Now take note that the theorem in the previous slides will remain valid if the word column replaces the word row. Elementary column operations are operations that are performed on the columns rather than the rows of a matrix. Two matrices are called column equivalent if one can be obtained from the other by elementary column operations. We can perform column operations or row operations to get the determinant of a matrix. Let us illustrate the use of column operations in this example. Take note that this is almost... A lower triangular matrix. When I said almost, this is still not yet a lower triangular matrix because I have here 3 and 6. So therefore, we want to zero out these entries. However, if we just focus on the 3 over here, if we use row operations, let's say I will use row 4, I cannot do that because it will mess up these two entries here. But we already just want it to stay that way, 0. We also cannot use row 3. It will also mess up these two entries. We cannot also use row 2. It will mess up this entry over here. However, if we use column operations, in particular, I replace column 4 with column 4 minus 3, column 1. Since that is just a replacement row operation, the determinant will not get changed. I now have 3 minus 3 is 0. 6 minus 6 is 0. This is still 0. Negative 5 minus 21 is negative 26. And now we have a lower triangular matrix, and therefore its determinant is equal to 1 times 7 times 3 times negative 26, which is equal to negative 546. Let's have one more example. Let us compute for this determinant. Now notice here that column 2 is a scalar multiple of column 1. If that is the case, I can perform a column operation. I will replace column 2 with column 2 plus 2 column 1. And the determinants will still be the same. The second column will now be equal to 0. And what would happen if we have a column of zeros over here? If you use cofactor expansion, all the cofactors would be multiplied to zero. And therefore, this determinant over here is equal to zero. What have we seen from that example? Take note that if a matrix has an entire row which consists of zeros, the determinant would be equal to zero. Because again, as I have mentioned, when you compute the cofactor expansion along that column or along that particular row, the determinant will be equal to zero. Next, if two rows or columns are equal, the determinant would also be equal to zero. Why is that? Let's say that I have two rows which are equal. If I subtract one row to the other row, let's say this is row I, this is row J, we will now have a row of zeros. And from this one, I already have 
an entire row of zeros and therefore the determinant is equal to zero. Another condition is that if one row or column is a multiple of another row, the determinant is also equal to zero. This is exactly what happened to our previous example. The second column was a multiple of the first column and that is why when we perform a replacement row operation, that column will be equal to zero. Let us evaluate the determinant of this matrix. First, let's check if we have rows or columns which are multiples of each other. We have none. So therefore, we will proceed by turning this into sort of a row echelon form. So first, I will swap rows 1 and 2. So I will now have negative determinant. Next, I want to make all of these entries zero. Upon doing this row operations over here, we will get Now take note that I already have here a column consisting of exactly one non-zero entry and the rest are zeros. I do not want to proceed with the row echelon form because I do not want to turn this into zero and turn this into zero. You can do that, but for my case, I will not do that. What I will do is I will use the cofactor expansion along this column over here. So this one would be equal to one times the determinant of this matrix. And take note that I can turn this into zero by adding row one to row three. And then again, I have a column Consisting of exactly one non-zero entry, get the cofactor expansion along this column again. This is negative 1 times the negative, so it will just be positive 1, times the determinant of the matrix obtained by removing this. This determinant is equal to 9 minus 27, we get negative 18. So therefore, the technique that I used to solve this particular example was I turned the matrix in such a way that I have one column consisting of one or whatever that is, and then the rest would be zeros. I used row reduction to get this one. And then once I have this form over here, I now use the cofactor expansion along. I use the cofactor expansion along this column to get the determinant of a smaller matrix and then again I repeated that process. I had one column and then something over here and then the rest would be zero and then reduce that, do that process again until I had a two by two matrix. So therefore this example only shows us that we can combine different methods to get the determinant of a matrix. We can use row reduction and then use cofactor expansion along the way, or it's up to you. You can use row reduction, you can just use row reduction from the very beginning, wherein you will end up with an upper triangular matrix. For our next example, we want to find the values of x for which the determinant of a is equal to zero. So first, I want to turn these entries to zero. This are replacement row operations, so the determinant will not get changed. I have 1 minus x squared, x minus x squared. Here I have 0, x minus x squared, and 
1 minus x squared. Just like in the previous example, I already have one column consisting of exactly one non-zero entry. So I will use the cofactor expansion along this. I have 1 times the determinant of we obtain this matrix by removing the first row and the first column. You can use algebra already to perform this, to find the determinant of this matrix. However, take note that we have a common factor. We have 1 minus x, 1 plus x, and this one here is x, 1 minus x, x, 1 minus x, and 1 minus x, 1 plus x. So therefore, for the determinant, I can pull out 1 minus x here. And here, I have a common factor of 1 minus x as well. So this one would be 1 minus x squared. I am left with 1 plus x, x, and x, 1 plus x. This is equal to 1 minus x squared times 1 plus x quantity squared minus x squared. So therefore, we have determinant of A is equal to 1 minus x squared times, when we simplify this, this is equal to 1 plus 2x. However, we want to solve for x such that the determinant of A is equal to 0. So therefore, we get that x is equal to plus or minus 1. Then here, x is equal to negative 1 half. For our last example, we want to show that this determinant here is equal to this one. I will just call this a. Again, my first technique is to turn this into 0. I will simply subtract row 1 from each of these rows. So I have 0 a2 minus a1, a2 squared minus a1 squared. For row 3, I have 0, a3 minus a1, a3 squared minus a1 squared. Just like in our previous example, I will get the cofactor expansion along this column because I have 1, 0, 0 here. So therefore, it's equal to 1 times the matrix obtained by removing this row and this column, we now have Again, we can factor this out. The first row has a common factor of a2 minus a1, whereas the second row has a common factor of a3 minus a2. I will pull those things out. I'm left with 1, a2 plus a1, 1, a3 plus a1. This is equal to A3 plus A1 minus A2 minus A1. And we get this and this. They are equal. In our next lesson, we are going to talk about the different properties of determination.